Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Susanna, Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Conard. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad to welcome you to worship today. Today is the second Sunday of Easter as we're in the Easter season. It is our Unity and Diversity Sunday, so you might notice there's some folks wearing their favorite sports team, supporting those that may or may not, probably not, are in the tournament still. But we're so glad that you're here for worship. We want to give a special welcome, especially if those of you who are here for the very first time. Welcome to worship. Thank you for joining us either online or in person. We'd love for you to get more connected in the life of the church. One of the best ways to do that is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. You can go to our website, share your name and email address, and we'll send an update every week with upcoming events and opportunities for you to connect in the life of the church. If you're here in person, you can find that Connect With Us card. There's also information on the back of that card where you can sign up as well. For those that are here in the worship center, we want to make space for you to say hello to those around you, introduce yourself or reintroduce yourself, share your name, and say, I'm so glad you're here for worship. Will you please stand and welcome your neighbors this morning? Good morning. Would you please stay standing for our Susanna Wesley welcome? Let's remember why we're here together. We follow Jesus' teachings to grow closer to God and each other. We want our community to be where everyone feels welcome and cared for. Now, let's say our commitment to this out loud. The words will be up on the screen. Can you join me in reading them as they appear? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. You can be who you are, you can be any way you are, and you are loved. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing and join in singing our opening song.
Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see. may be seated. And as you're seated, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in our opening prayer. Will you pray with me? God of power and promise, you call us to be your witnesses in the world. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and ignite our hearts with a passion for your kingdom. Guide our steps and give us the courage to follow where you lead, trusting in your abiding presence. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. The narrative lectionary comes today from Acts chapter one, verses one through 14. I invite you to stand physically or spiritually as we listen to today's scripture reading. Let's connect with the voices of the Bible as we listen to God's word. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, and as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up to you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went into the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, Judas, James's son, all were united in their devotion to prayer along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of the scripture. You may be seated. 
Can you imagine the buzz in Jerusalem after that very first Easter? The crucifixion, the empty tomb, the appearances of Jesus, the city must have been electric and in also filled with wonder, confusion, and anticipation. Can you imagine the roller coaster of emotions experienced by the disciples? And now we find another twist, Jesus' ascension into heaven. It's a moment of transition, a hinge point between the familiar and the unknown. But as we'll discover, it's also a moment that's filled with promise and purpose. The scripture passage that we'll be discussing today is part of the larger narrative of the scriptures that point to Jesus. These texts are written a long time ago, and yet they still speak to us today. They are alive and active. The Holy Spirit is speaking through them and communicates with us. And so I invite you to listen for how God is speaking to you and take some notes, maybe write some things down that you want to reflect on in the days ahead. Before we dive into today's passage from Acts, let's revisit the scriptures that we've looked at over the last few worship services. We've journeyed with Jesus and his disciples through pivotal moments in the past several weeks. On Holy Thursday, we looked at Mark chapter 14. We remembered and witnessed the Last Supper where Jesus shared a meal with his disciples, his closest friends, and he introduced the profound symbol of the bread and the cup representing his body and blood given and shed for us. It's a meal that we'll share later in the worship service today. We follow Jesus to Gethsemane where he wrestled with the weight of his impending suffering and death while pleading with God to ta- and as his disciples struggled to stay awake. Last week, Mark 16 brought us to the empty tomb where Mary and the other devoted women discovered that Jesus had risen from the dead just as he promised. And while they were initially afraid, they were called to share this astonishing news of hope and life, first with the disciples, and as we'll see in the weeks ahead, to the entire world. Today in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, we fast forward to after Jesus' resurrection appearances. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus spends 40 days preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God to those that were closest to him. He urges the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the coming of the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus ascends, the disciples are left gazing upward, wondering what comes next. Two angelic figures appear, telling them and assuring them that Jesus will return. The disciples gather in Jerusalem, devote themselves to prayer as they await the Spirit's arrival. Through these passages, we see God's redemptive plan unfolding. The cross and the resurrection are not the end of the story, but the beginning of the next chapter. As Jesus departs, he leaves his followers with a mission and the promise of divine power to be able to fulfill it. Like the disciples, we might experience uncertainty and be in a season of waiting, but we can trust on God's ongoing presence and guidance. So let's venture into Acts 1 and explore how this passage speaks to our lives in the aftermath of Easter. Acts 1 transports us into a pivotal moment in the early church's history. This text was probably written around the year 80 to 90 AD. It's a sequel to the gospel account of Jesus' story. Followers of Jesus were known as followers of the way, and they faced at this time a strong persecution from the mighty Roman Empire. It's in this climate that Luke documents the church's birth and expansion in the book of Acts. Again, try to imagine what it was like in first century Jerusalem. The disciples had seen Jesus' life, death, and resurrection firsthand. They were right there, and now they were navigating a world without his physical presence. What was this going to be like? This passage for today sets the stage for the entire book of Acts and prepares us to begin to recount the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the gospel spread to the very ends of the earth. It links Jesus' earthly ministry with the church's spirit-driven mission. Jesus' time of teaching and preaching for 40 days about God's kingdom before his ascension continues the teaching that he had begun before his death and resurrection. And then as Jesus ascends, angels assure the disciples that this is not the end. Jesus is coming again, and the disciples gather together. They unite in prayer. 
These verses contribute to the Bible's overarching story of God's redemptive plan from beginning to end. Jesus' ascension marks this transition point where the followers of Jesus step into their role of witnesses. The passage emphasizes continuity between Jesus' work and the church's mission, both empowered by the Holy Spirit. It combines narrative and dialogue and infused with an anticipation as the disciples await the Spirit's coming. Now, I think sometimes the themes from this first chapter of Acts might resonate with our lives today. You see, we all face moments of transition and uncertainty, much like the disciples after Jesus' ascension. These transitions can take many different forms and occur at various stages in life, including the life of our congregation. Pastoral transitions are part of the life in the United Methodist Church, and we all experience them a little bit differently. In less than three months, our church family here at Susanna Wesley will navigate this change as Nicole, our kids, and I move to McPherson, and Pastor Amy Seifert comes to join you here at Susanna Wesley. This transition may bring up a mix of emotions for you, for us, excitement for new possibilities, sadness in saying goodbye, and perhaps a lot of uncertainty about the future. And yet, just as the disciples found strength in their unity and prayer as they awaited the Holy Spirit, we also can find comfort and guidance in our shared faith and the support of each other during this time of transition. Of course, pastoral transition is just one of the many changes that we all go through in our lives. Sometimes you might remember a time of experiencing job transition due to retirement, a change in career, or an unexpected job loss. Maybe you're grappling with questions about identity or financial security and finding meaning in your work. These transitions can be exciting and challenging as you explore new opportunities, acquire new skills, or adjust to a different work environment. Always remember that your value and worth are inherent as a beloved child of God and are not defined by your job title or your employment status. Others caring today may be navigating the challenges of aging, such as changes in health or mobility or independence. Sometimes these transitions can be difficult emotionally and physically. They require us to adapt to rely on our faith and the support of family and friends and neighbors, perhaps in ways that are different than we've been used to in the past. Others may be experiencing shifts in family dynamics, such as becoming empty nesters, caring for a child as they're growing up, or welcoming grandchildren even. These transitions can bring both joy and sorrows as we celebrate new life and confront the passing of time. In all of these moments, we might find ourselves like the disciples looking to the skies and wondering what comes next. Acts chapter 1 offers valuable guidance in such times of transition. First, it reminds us to ground ourselves in prayer and community. The disciples gathered together, constantly praying as they awaited the Holy Spirit's arrival. When we face transitions or challenges in our lives, we can lean into prayer and the support of fellow believers, sharing our joys, our fears, and hopes with God and others can provide strength and clarity in times of change. Second, this passage calls us to embrace our identity as Jesus' witnesses. In our daily interactions at school, at work, in our neighborhoods, we can embody Christ's love and share the good news of Jesus through our actions and our words. Now, this doesn't mean we have to be perfect or have all the answers, but it does mean that we have the chance to be open about our faith and extend compassion and grace and care to those around us. Finally, we can trust the Holy Spirit's power and presence. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would empower his followers to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. And as we navigate life's challenges and opportunities, we can rely on the same Spirit to guide, strengthen, and empower us. The Spirit equips us to fill each of our individual unique callings and together participate in God's ongoing mission of redemption and restoration. 
The good news is that Jesus offers us a powerful invitation to participate in God's ongoing work in the world. Just as the disciples were called to be Jesus' witnesses, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we also are invited to step into our role in sharing the gospel and embodying Christ's love to all that we meet. Just as the disciples were not left alone, we are not abandoned either. The same Spirit that empowered them is alive and active in you, in me, in all of us together. So as we navigate the transitions and the opportunities of this post-Easter season, hold on to the promise of the Spirit's presence, devote yourselves to prayer and community, and step out in faith, knowing that Christ is risen and goes before us. Will you pray with me? Risen Lord, we marvel at your ascension and the promise of your return. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit that we might be bold witnesses to your love and grace. In times of transition and uncertainty, grant us the peace of your presence. Empower us to live as your faithful disciples, extending your kingdom in our daily lives. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. If you're comfortable with standing, would you please stand and let's all join in singing and they'll know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all you You may be seated. As you're seated, I want to draw your attention to some upcoming events and opportunities for you to connect. Each of these are happening next Sunday. We start next Sunday with our Spring Cantata. It's Footprints in the Sand. This will be a beautiful experience for you to enjoy the words and music of this song as we enter into this next season in our life together as a community. I'm grateful for JP and for Ty for their leadership, and we invite you to make sure and be here on Sunday morning as we experience this uh, together. Also, next Sunday is Native American Ministry Sunday. We'll have a special offering to support ministry for, of United Methodists in Native American communities, both in Kansas and Nebraska and across the globe. We invite you to consider giving to this special offering that we'll receive next Sunday. Also, next Sunday afternoon is our next meeting of our Susanna Wesley Advance and our church council. If you are on one of our governance teams, we invite you to gather together to uh, connect with each other and um, for our church council to meet in the evening. That'll be next Sunday afternoon and evening. 
Now, we also want to invite you to use the spiritual practices to become more like Jesus. We say them every week in our Susanna Wesley Welcome, and today I want to remind you about the invitation to study. We grow together in our knowledge and understanding of God and Scripture through study. This means spending time in the Scriptures both on our own and with other people. Individually, we invite you to read five verses of Scripture every day. And together, we invite you to be a part of a study, a class, an opportunity here at Susanna Wesley to connect in your faith with others as together we grow to become more like Jesus. I invite you to worship, study, serve, give, and share with me in the days ahead. We come now to the time in our worship service in which we pause for some, an extended time of prayer. And there's a variety of ways in which we're going to invite you to connect today. We're going to begin with a time of quiet so that you might lift your own prayers to God. You might continue listening for what God is saying to you. You can pray with your eyes closed if you like. It's a traditional form of prayer. If you want to pray with your eyes open, we invite you to do that as well. In just a minute, there'll be names of, and prayers of, for individuals and families that we're keeping in our prayers for a variety of reasons. We invite you to pray for them today and in the days ahead. Some people find it meaningful to light a candle as a part of your prayers. If you're at home and you have a candle, we invite you to light it as a symbol of your prayers. If you're here in person at the worship center, there's two candles here at the front, you, and there's candles uh, to be lit in front. If you would like to light a candle, we invite you to move and come forward at any time to light one as a symbol of your prayers, as a reminder to be the light of Christ, or perhaps in honor or memory of someone. You can do that at any time. After this time of quiet, I'll guide us in a group prayer together, and then we'll continue with the worship service. But you can set all that aside if you want, and remember that most importantly, the Spirit that Jesus promised is with us right here and now. So breathe in the Spirit's presence, know that God is with you, and join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we gather in your presence, praising you for your endless love and grace. Your spirit moves among us, empowering us to be your hands and feet. We marvel at your goodness and stand in awe of your faithfulness. And yet we confess that we often need to catch up to your call. We allow fear and doubt to hold us back from fully embracing your mission for us. In the silence of our hearts, we bring before you the ways that we've failed to live as your witnesses, how we've made a mistake in our thoughts, our words, or our actions. Receive our prayers of confession. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your forgiveness and the transformative power of your love. We're grateful for our hope in Christ and the promise of new life through your spirit. We lift the concerns of our community and the world around us. We pray for those who are sick or struggling with physical or mental health challenges. Grant them healing and comfort 
and guide the hands of all those who care for them. We remember those who are grieving, facing loss and heartache. Surround them with your love and the support of their communities. We pray for our leaders in the church and the world. Give them wisdom, compassion, and a deep sense of justice as they serve. Empower them to lead with integrity and work for the common good. God, we ask that you continue to pour your spirit on us just as you did on that first Pentecost, just as you promised before you ascended. Fill us with boldness and courage to share your love and truth with the world. Please help us to be your faithful witnesses, proclaiming your kingdom in our words and our actions. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. As we've taken a moment to check in with God, I invite you to take a moment to check in. Let us know that you're connected with worship today. Whether you're online or in person, you can use the Church Center app to uh, check in and let us know that you're here. You can download it with the uh, QR code on the Connect With Us card in the pew in front of us. Or if you're here in person, just flip that card over, fill out the information, and drop it off at the clear box at the welcome table on your way out today. We also want to invite you to consider giving to financially support God's work through Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. Every dollar that you give goes to help us fulfill our mission, and you can make a difference by setting up a one-time or recurring gift in the Church Center app. You can text any dollar amount to 84321, or if you're here in person, use that offering envelope, fill it out, and drop it in the offering plate at the welcome table on your way out today. As you're taking a moment to consider giving and checking in to let us know that you are here today, I'd like to invite you to listen to the words and music of the choir as they give us a taste of the Spring Cantata next week with Footprints in the Sand.
And now I invite you to stand as you're able for your closing song today. Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.